This is from the New York Magazine, and here is the headline. AOC is just another Democrat. And here's David Haifunk, friend of the show. Let's see what he says about it. AOC has been just another, just a regular old Democrat since she came into office. It is peak Democrat to make campaign promises only to capitulate at every turn to the establishment. People who are surprised, frankly, shouldn't have been. If you're surprised about about uh, this article or them calling it calling her this. Um, and I must say, I agree. And let's go to a couple of other ones because a lot of people have been talking about this. Here goes Nick. Nick's caption is, all the people who used to get mad at me for bashing AOC are now forced to admit what we've been saying for years now. Sad thing is these democratic socialist types will never apologize for attacking us for telling the truth about AOC before it was cool. Um, here goes Ajamu Baraka. Let's see what he says. Uh, Ajamu says the opportunism and immorality of AOC is consistent with Democrats who can't even call out the obvious racism of Israel. This is why they are so afraid of the West campaign. They know this fear of Trump lying is not going to get it this time around and this is what i've been saying so shout out to ajamu baraka that's what i've been saying the trump is bad is not an effective talking point any longer because we've lived through both uh presidency let's see what this guy zed jelani he's terrible zed jelani is a freaking awful sometimes i notice about this piece something i notice about this piece is most people are arguing about it don't seem to have any concrete metric of what makes a good member of Congress <laughs> like Bill's Bass. So, of course, they are debating slogans and optics. As terrible as I said, Zed Jelani. So, as if we need anything, any sort of metric to clearly say that AOC has been terrible. This is what the professional, well, how are you able to determine that? Really? Really, you can live through what? AOC has done for the last several years, and you can say that shit with a straight face, Zed Jelani. But like I said, he is freaking terrible. Um, but let's get to a couple of more. I'll re oh, look at this here. Here goes another one. Here goes another. These are AOC stands. So this article conveniently ignores that AOC has endorsed more primary challengers. Two incumbent corporate friendly Democrats than any federally elected official, which is one of the hardest things to do as an incumbent. Oh, so they didn't include that, Wally. So that's a big deal because they didn't include that. These these people, man, these people. Anyway, let's let's leave let's leave that nonsense up right here. And then let me read the article. This is the article. Let's see. Keep getting. Oh, actually, actually, this is how I found it. So let me read his first. This is Glenn Greenwald. AOC is just another is just a regular old Democrat now. As hilarious as is as it is obviously true and extra pathetic for the vanishingly few people on the left who cling to their parasocial affection for her in order to deny all of this. And let's click on it let's dive into it aoc recent appearance on pod uh, save america podcast had for me the feeling of a of a final disappointment the kind that's a that's a little sad but brings a set of quintic hope to a close AOC appeared on the popular crooked media, crooked media show to announce her endorsement of Joe Biden for president in the 2024 election. To deliver that particular endorsement while appearing that particular podcast where former Obama administrators, administration staff defined the limits of acceptable left of center opinion was to send a very deliberate message. It was AOC's last kiss off to the radicals who had supported her, 
voted for her, donated to her campaign, and made her unusually famous in American politics, the beneficiary of a wholly unique cult of personality that is now starting to come undone. And that is spot on as far as AOC. So like I said, this article um, is pretty good when it's talking about the critique of AOC. And let's continue. An endorsement of a sitting president, after all, doesn't have to be a ceremonial affair. AOC could have sent out a tweet in making her announcement in a forum where the hosts were saying that a vote for anyone but Joe was a vote for Donald Trump, a distillation of the hollow, we're not Trump message the Democrats have been loudly pushing for the past seven years. AOC was put in a bow on a half decade long uh, uh, drift from the radical outsider to the establishment liberal. That is such a poignant uh, sentence there. Since taking office in January of 2019, she has deferred to party leadership again and again on the issues that matter. Even if she has made token gestures of resistance to solidify the illusion that she is a that is she is with us. And increasingly, she seems stunned by criticism from the left to the point to where she appears ready, ready to simply embrace her party and its politics with open arms. That is so spot on about um, AOC. And I'm going to continue here. In a 2021 interview with a publication with a publication of the Democratic Socialists of America, AOC attacked left critics of the Biden administration on identitarian grounds. Quote, we really have to ask ourselves, what is the message that you are sending to your black and brown and undocumented members of your community, to your friends, when you say nothing has changed? End quote. This is a stark Example of what socialist critics have accused Democrats of doing for years, that they forbid criticism and enforce loyalty to the party through vague accusations of racism and references to people of color and other marginalized groups. Yet during the very period in which she gave the interview, the Biden administration had been busily deporting tens of thousands of undocumented immigrants, almost all of them black and brown. So as AOC gives cover as a brown uh, elected official, she gives cover to Joe Biden. You see what Joe Biden is doing at the same time to black and brown people. Let's continue with the article. Less than three years earlier on the campaign trail, AOC had sung a very different tune about by about partisan politics at a campaign event in 2018 she addressed how brett kavanaugh could be confirmed to the supreme court despite the sexual assault allegations against him saying quote when people say how could this have happened it is because of the slow side slide of our uh, public institutions where too many people sat on the sidelines and read the newspaper and said, quote, wow, that's crazy. Time to go to class. In her consistent uh, fealty to the Democratic Party leadership, she has done exactly that. Lamenting about how crazy the world is, then hurrying off to dutifully, and I should say that more clearly, dutifully full of follow the lead of her superiors. Just a fantastic critique. Um, and, and I must say, I haven't seen a sort of spot on critique of AOC in print media. I'm trying to think. Maybe a Teen Vogue on one of them off articles because they do every now and then they'll toss in a great, like outstanding article on Teen Vogue. Maybe it was on Teen Vogue, but I can't I can't vividly uh, remember. But let's let's continue. There are two indelible images of AOC. Neither of them are flattering that book in her evolution. The first is the photo of her weeping outside of an immigration camp 
in Texas in 2018 before she won election in, to Congress. Dressed all in white, she wails in protest of kids in cages, the phrase employed by activists to denounce Trump-era immigration policy. The protest itself wasn't offensive. Our treatment of, of migrants at the border is indeed indefensible. The trouble lies in where what didn't happen next. When Biden took office in 2020, American immigration policy uh, did not meaningfully change. This is often chalked up to COVID era restrictions, but those restrictions are long gone and Democrats have not made significant changes to Trump's border policy. There are literally still kids in cages. So why isn't AOC at the border again protesting her country's president? And this is something we all bring up on Twitter, at least all the time. There's still kids in cages. We bring up and now that picture of AOC in all white at, at one of the facilities uh, where the kids and the families are in cages. That's now a meme. It is now a widely used meme because of what this article is talking about. Um, and let's continue, actually. OK, but AOC tried to have it both ways. She wore white again, this time a dress in in blazing in bolden with the words tax the rich in bright red and this made her opportunity to rub shoulders with the one percent a matter of direct hypocrisy it's one thing to go to the party it's one thing to go to the party it's another to blare out a message that you disapprove of the party while you're there this is this is a fantastic article on AOC and it covers so much of of the downfall of the virtue signaling of the just outright lies and deception by this particular person AOC if there is a key to AOC's political persona it lies between the two poles the former portrays the feder the uh, fundamental moral con uh, uh, corruption of the bipartisanship it compels people to care about political issues precisely to the degree that those issues are convenient for the party. Losing interest in our immoral immigration uh, uh, system after Biden, uh, Biden's election is exactly the sort of thing that AOC's rabid fans once said she would never do. The latter not only sees AOCs transported from the outside, uh, the gates into the inside of the most elite venues, it also showcases AOC's increasingly half-hearted attempts to cover up her genuinely predictions, her, her genuine predict predilections uh, with the most superficial and symbolic acts. Take, for example, the chronic mistreatment of workers in our railroad system that contributed to the derailment and subsequent air crisis in East, East Palestine, Ohio. AOC publicly cast, uh, cast, castigated the railroad companies and demanded better conditions for workers, then voted to forbid them from striking. It's hard to imagine a clearer example of her overall political orientation speaking up like a militant supporter of workers in the press then immediately portraying them with her vote and i i can't think of a more clearer sort of uh example of what this article is talking about than the rail and it, it's it's you know we are for the rail workers. We're for them. And, you know, uh, uh, give them sick days, give them this and that and this and, uh, you know, worker, 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 and then go ahead and vote to, to crush their strike. This is the sort of the dichotomy that we've all been seeing, the, the, the sort of two-facedness of AOC, that the professional managerial class has been sort of pushing back on us against telling us that we're being too mean about AOC when we're calling out this nonsense that she's doing. And finally, the professional managerial class. I would say this is the first article that's talking about this in a, in a, a larger publication. 
Um, and it's spot on as far as the critique of AOC. Uh, let's read a little more. She would go on to claim that this was really a matter of supporting what the workers wanted. But Railroad Workers United quickly clarified that this defense was an act of remarkable dishonesty. Remember the whole when Ryan Graham, oh, no, 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 no. The workers wanted AOC and the squad to do this. Remember Ryan Graham tried to, tried to uh, deploy that nonsense? He was going on different shows. He even came on RBN. He came on, he did the Bad, Pay, Bad Faith podcast with Brianna Joy Gray. And they had Shama Sawant and him. He was still trying to sell this line that the rail workers wanted her to do this, to vote to crush the strike, which was nonsense. Because as this article points out, Railroad, Railroad Workers United quickly clarified that this defense was an act of remarkable dishonesty. Labor is the heart of the left and strikes at the sword of labor. To And strikes are the sword of labor. To vote to forbid workers from striking for, for a supposed socialist amounts to an unforgivable betrayal of basic values. But uh, Mike over at the Humanist Report says this is not a cancelable, cancelable offense. Breaking a strike. Voting to break a strike. That's what he said. I remember it vividly. Less surprising, but just as damning, has been AOC's meek attitude towards Biden's foreign policy. This Israeli occupation of Palestine is perhaps where AOC's position has been most indefensible, most self uh, parodic. She has mixed, she has mixed at times impressive rhetoric with total in inconsistency as a legislator. On the campaign trail in 2018, she ruffled many feathers by saying, quote, the occupation of Palestine is just an increasing increasing crisis of humanitarian condition, end quote. It's a testament to just how constrained the establishment conversation is on this issue that such a mild statement drew controversy. But simply referring to the occupation as an occupation was an encouraging sign. So disappointing then that AOC has spent the past half decade waffling on this issue. Notoriously, she cried on the floor of Congress over a bill to fund Israel's Iron Dome. One small part of our country's seemingly limitless willingness to support that country's uh, domination of Palestine, Palestine and then proceeded to vote present rather than no on funding bill in question. And we all know that. Like all the things, the examples that this article points out, these are all things that we all have been talking about, all have been pointing out, all who have made memes about for a while now. But it's so, it's such a needed thing, and it kind of puts a dot on the eye for AOC because we've been saying this is really a swan song for AOC. She has, she now knows and understands clearly that she has lost the left. Uh, uh, any anybody who were who was respectably calling themselves a left, she understands she has lost that. So she has pivoted to the middle and going straight after the liberals. She is a Democratic uh, establishment shield now, and she accepts that role. She is no longer pretending not to be that. So uh, let's continue here. Some suggested that there are a deeper political purpose to her present vote, that she was playing 12-dimensional chess. This is what they're saying. Wait, just hold on. The AOC stand. She that was on, on a reason. She voted present because there's some grand strategy. This article speaks to that. Some suggested that there was a deeper political purpose for her present vote. That she was playing a 12 dimensional chess. It's powerfully difficult to understand how this could work, though. Israel's vor ferocious champions will. 
uh, denounced any opponent as an anti-Semite, and indeed AOC's vote did not spare her from their wrath. Perhaps it's true, as some suggested, that the point was to better position her for Senate run, but against it's difficult. But again, it's difficult to see how voters motivated to defend Israel would ever support her giving her past statements anyway. If she simply if she simply privately agreed with sending uh, Israel's military even more American funding, then she had little to worry about. The measure carried by a margin of 411 votes. So what was she doing beyond simultaneously angering the base of voters that who had put her into office and the pro-Israel establishment that would um, uh, that would antagonize that was antagonistic towards her regardless. Basically, she's pissing off the people who who are against a uh, who are against the Zionism, and she is simultaneously pissing off the people who are, are pro zionists which doesn't make any sense to me. As it is so often the case, AOC seems simultaneously, aimlessly, and calculated a ruthlessly a ruthless political operator and someone in and someone in over her head. Even her symbolic acts are confusing and inconsistent. Consider the debate within the Democratic Party about using the 2021 American Rescue Plan COVID relief bill to raise the minimum wage. Adjusted for inflation, the 1970 federal minimum wage was more than $12 an hour. The 2023 minimum wage stands at $7.25. Under the auspicious of a federal dem a Democratic trifecta, some left-leaning Democrats proposed raising that meager minimum. There was nothing nefarious about this effort. Ramming through fav uh, f favorite legislation as part of a major package is a POG standard element of Congress, of congressional practice. Republicans do it all the time, and yet, predictably, centrist Democrats fought against the effort. And the, the article goes on and on. I'm going to read this last part, and then we can close out here. Because I'm only halfway through this article. They literally go through all the nonsense that AOC has been doing and calls her out for all of her waffling, calls her out for all of this nonsense. And it goes like this. AOC at first looked like a champion of the minimum wage increase. Quote, AOC to take minimum wage fight directly to Joe Biden. Read a Newsweek headline that was typical of the breathless style with which AOC had been covered. Quote, there are progressive Democrats that have that have that muscle in the House, end quote, AOC was quoted saying, if we are a party decided to stand down on our promises of elevating the minimum wage, I think that extraordinarily spurious and it's sometime that our that as a party we could have further conversations about how to fight it more word salad from her would it surprise you to learn that they did not in fact use that muscle we're talking about the minimum wage fight when the time came she voted for the a the arp bill anyway without the 15 dollar minimum wage provision of course, she would have lost if she had voted against the bill. But then why not do so as a symbolic gesture? She clearly had no issues with making some gestures, given that some 18 months later, she would stand as the only Democrat to vote against an omni, uh, omnibus spending bill supported by the president. This has made has been maddening element of her tenure in Congress. There's no rhyme or reason to when she will and won't buck party leadership. No internal, no internal logic to which heel she's willing to die on and which she isn't. 
are protest votes valuable? Or are they not? If they're valuable enough to do in some scenarios where her vote wouldn't matter, why not demonstrate solidarity with Palestinians in favor of a higher minimum wage? Why? What is the plan here? And I'm going to stop there. My eyes are getting tired. There's a lot, lot, lot more to read. But to the to the point here, um, another point, another time where she did this is um, with the strike to break the strike of the rail workers. She did not need to vote for that in order for it to pass. She could have done and just did a, a gesture, like a signaling gesture to vote against it. It would have still passed. So why would you still vote, vote for it, AOC, unless there's something else?